what you have for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for uh, Gary and Ivan opening up their home, oh God, for us to be here, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless them, Lord. Bless their coming in and they going out, whatever they stand in need of, oh God. Give it to them before they even ask it, oh Lord. And thank you for all that made it here safely, oh God. Hallelujah. Cover them even as they prepare to go, when they go home or to their next destination. Let no hurt, harm, and danger come because they press their way to the house. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy glad. Because it was rough for a sister. Amen. Yesterday was rough. And this is where this word came from. God birthed this thing. And it came. He woke me up at 4.30 this morning, y'all. Mm. And I was like, before he even got me up, I was hearing it in my head. He was downloading. And I was like, oh, God. And he said, um, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to get up. And you know how we do. Yeah. So it's probably about 4 that he woke me yeah. up. But it was 4.30. Gary, come on in here with us, bruh. It was about 4.30 that I actually got up. And then I just, I couldn't type fast enough seeing light. And you know how you make a mistake. You had to go back and do some corrections and everything. But I'm just so excited. So the word that he gave me for you all this morning, the, the message is don't let oppression Stop your push. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. Don't let oppression stop your push. And the scriptures, he gave me two out of Psalms. The first one being Psalm 103, 6, which said, The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Psalm 72, 12 through 14 says, For he will deliver the needy when he cries the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and the needy. He will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. Amen. 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 May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. And you know, as I was reading and I, I got to thinking, I said, you know, needy is not always poverty. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand mm -hmm. it's not meaning that we're just impoverished. Mm -hmm. Now, Amen. we may be missing some money. Some of us may be on, you know, on the low side when it comes to that kind of thing, or we're missing something. There is some area that we're missing that we're falling short. Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be security, you know, it having to be a secure in who we are as a child of God. It could be um, in, in our minds. We might be fighting anxiety. We might be fighting depression. Amen. We mm -hmm. may be fighting, yeah, we may be fighting something financial. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there might be food, lacking in food. But there is a need that we all have some kind of need. Maybe we need more love in our life. Maybe we need more compassion. Maybe there's some fruit of the, of the fruit of the spirit. Maybe yes. we're not operating in it fully. So there's a need. So I stopped and I just had to pause right there just to express that because I don't want us to get it twisted <coughs> and think that needy means that we have our hand out. Right. right. Because there are other areas where we fall That's short. Amen. 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 <coughs> so when we look at the when we look at the press, oppression. Oppression is defined as mental pressure or distress, mm. also <coughs> as prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control, where you're feeling weighed down mm. in body and spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about, I'm going to talk about me, so that way yeah, ain't nobody saying I'm talking about y'all, <laughs> but I'm going to talk about me. There are times where we feel just weighed and we feel heavy and and we feel it it's reflected in our body our our backs may be hurting our knees may be hurting our head may be hurting Amen. our shoulders come on, come on. because we're feeling that oppression mm -hmm. from the enemy so many of us at times and maybe even now have been oppressed or in an oppressive situation <coughs> and we've been in a place where we just could not or at least feel like we could see our way clear However, when we find ourselves in this predicament, we have to put on our big girl pants or big boy pants, amen, <laughs> amen. And, and be determined not to let the <laughs> oppression stop our push. That's amen. right. Amen. So we're used to the acronym PUSH, meaning uh, praying until something happens. But in this sense, PUSH means, God gave me PUSH means pressing unto strategic heights. 
Yes, we are in a season where God is bringing us out of situations that have set us back, that have kept us down, that has hemmed us up. And understand, God realizes the situations that we in are based on choices we made, whether good or bad, or situations that we that were out of our control. But hallelujah to God, um, because of the, our faithfulness unto him, mm -hmm. Amen. In spite of everything that we've gone through and, and because of his grace and mercy, he's bringing us out anyway. Yeah. This is the season where he's bringing us out anyway. And, yeah. and yes, we, we may be in the midst of a comeback and, and God is even upgrading us to a better place than what we were before. But we must realize that in this season of upgrades and promotion, we must also be strategic in the moves we make mm -hmm. as we climb to these higher heights. Thank you, Jesus. Our promotions and elevations aren't simply just for more money or a better way of life, but also that we will be in the right position for the move of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the position that God is, that they gave me, that God is talking about right now is twofold. One reason is for us to be in a position to lead his people to Christ. Mm -hmm. Each one of us has been pre-assigned a group of people to lead to the Lord or help them in their walk with the Lord. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They were assigned to us before the beginning of time at the moment he ordained us and mm -hmm. he wrote the story of our life. Mm -hmm. For the word tells us that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. 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 And so he wrote our story and he's made all the edits and all the changes and the corrections. Mm -hmm. And it's all for his glory. Mm -hmm. And even as we're going through now, there still is some continual writing because he tells us that yeah. he knows that the plans that I have for you, yes. the plans for us to prosper and not fail, for us to be a success, mm -hmm. have a hope and a future. That's it. Okay, so so in this, when he wrote our story, he said, you know, and, and some of these people, amen, that, that, that these folks that he's given us and he's assigned, pre-assigned, mm -hmm. not pre-assigned, right. amen. 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 okay, some of these folks are family. <laughs> friends, mm -hmm. co-workers, church members, and strangers that we meet along the way. Mm -hmm. Some we will want to work with and help. And let's be real, others will be more challenging and test mm -hmm. our strength. Glory. Amen. And if we really want to be honest, I mean, I mean, I got, because I'm real, because I'm real. I'm in real folk in here. Okay, if it's, we really want to be honest, there are going to even be some people that we don't want to help at all. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't we don't even want to deal with them. Matter of fact, we refuse to deal with them. Now, I'm not talking about those folks that God tell us to remove from our lives. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about those, but I'm talking about those ones that we want to move, remove from our lives and God chasing us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and come back at us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I told you you was in my message this morning. Okay. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. So if you don't know the difference now, trust that in time you will, okay? And no matter the relationship, they have been assigned to us to help them walk out their soul salvation mm -hmm. by teaching them how to apply God's word yes. to their life. Amen. That's right. Now, the second reason that we have to be in position is to receive the mantle that God is dropping on us. Okay. Mm -hmm. The mantle is an important role or responsibility that passes from one person to another. Mm -hmm. So in the Bible, we may see, the, we see it as a, a, a loose a garment, a cloak if you will, when they mm -hmm. talk about the mantle, right? Mm -hmm. And then we may see it uh, passed in the natural where they hand it, and then we've seen in the word where they just fell. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. It just fell on the person. And so however, um, whether through a, a natural pa passing or not, there is a responsibility that's also spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. And so regardless of how you receive the mantle, whether you receive it spiritually or it's passed directly from what person to another no matter how you receive it you still have to be in position mm -hmm. to receive it that's right mm -hmm. for there is the work that God has assigned specifically for you to do amen mm -hmm. now I was at William McDowell's church in, in Florida and and he gave a, a visiting one Sunday and he gave an awesome analogy <laughs> about uh, uh, being in position to receive your mantle he said, it's like a package being delivered to your house. Mm -hmm. Packages are delivered to a specific address. 
not necessarily to a specific person. So whether the person is home or not, the package is going to come to that address. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether they moved or they just went. That package is coming to the address because the package is going to the address and not necessarily to the person. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is up to the person who's receiving the package to be at that address to receive it. Mm -hmm. Can y'all get a vision yeah. of that? Yeah, Amen. Yeah, right, right. You got to be there for its delivery mm -hmm. or at least come home to it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to the person to be there to receive it. And if they aren't, that package isn't going to be delivered elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about those special arrangements where you call UPS <laughs> and say, hey, I'm not going to be home delivered to my... I'm not talking about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about those that you have specifically assigned to come to that address, whether mm -hmm. you're there, whether you move or not. I'm here now. Mm -hmm. So if I have a package go there, I'm not there mm -hmm. because I'm here. Right. Forward. And that's what I'm getting ready to all in. See, you want to all in? And you know what? And the thing is, God is not obligated to re deliver the package. That's right. Wow. He's not obligated to deliver the, re deliver the mantle to wherever you are. Mm. However, it is our responsibility to be in position to receive it. That's okay. Right. Now, I'm sure. You know, we all realize that it's also the enemy's job to keep us out of position. Mm -hmm. Okay, he doesn't want us to build or help build the kingdom of God. He doesn't want us to walk in the role that God has prepared and planned for us. And he certainly doesn't want us to be promoted or elevated. for Because for those of us who are truly walking with God and truly have a heart for God, those resources that we get from that elevation and promotion... What are we going to do? We're going to use it to upbuild his kingdom, mm -hmm. and then we're not going to hold it for selfish gain. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. so, so how does the enemy stop us? He attacks our mind, uh -huh. our environment, uh -huh. and oftentimes we'll use those that are closest to us to hurt us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we internalize the hurt and we don't address it immediately, that spirit will invite its friends <coughs> <clears throat> such as anger, bitterness, envy, jealousy, etc. Well, you all get the picture, right? Okay. And, and these spirits, if not deal, dealt with, will lead to such things as insecurity, uh -huh. self-hate, self-doubt, anxiety, uh -huh. oppression, depression, uh -huh. and even suicide. Uh -huh. So it's the enemy's job to get us uh -huh. as far away as he can from the true GPS, uh -huh. which is God's positioning system, yeah. so that he can keep uh -huh. us from receiving what God has for us. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. So, how do we combat these attacks? Well, you know what? I'm so glad you asked. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad y'all asked. I heard it. I heard it. This yeah. morning I heard y'all was going to ask that question. <laughs> so, we get in the Word of God. Yes. We ask Him to give us wisdom and revelation knowledge as we read so we can have understanding. Mm -hmm. We get in a posture of praise and worship and allow ourselves to not only talk to God, but to listen mm -hmm. to what he has to say so that we can hear him for direction. Sometimes we got to go, like my grandma said, we got to go somewhere, sit down, yeah. and shut up, and just listen. She used to say that, you know, just listen to hear what he has to say. We have to align ourselves with godly counsel and ministry, such as this one here, and we have to get in a church that is speaking the truth of his word Amen. and exhibiting the love of God and the fruit of his spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, we don't you know, we don't need to be afraid to go and check the word that is spoken to us Amen. against the word of God. We have to do that. We have yes, to study. Well. We have to make sure that what we're being taught is lining mm -hmm. up with God's word. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and so we can't be afraid. And, and you know, to, to go back, and if it doesn't, if something is amiss or something that we don't understand, we cannot, that cannot be afraid to go back to the preachers. And ask them about it. That's because right. they're human and we all make mistakes, right? So we can't go back. We can't be afraid. And if they're worth their salt, mm -hmm. if they're worth their salt, they won't mind admitting yeah. Yeah. that I made that and owning up to it. That's right. And then they'll go and publicly correct it yes, in front of right. the congregation. Hey, listen, I told you and I was wrong. <laughs> 
That's if they're worth their salt, okay? Right. So we also need to get in a good Bible study or Sunday school to also increase our knowledge. A lot of times we want to hide from the word and we want to run from the word. And I don't know about y'all, but I've had my mom preachers had their moments too. I, I'm going to speak for me. <laughs> y'all can let me know. But Amen. have your moment where sometimes when stuff gets so heavy, you're just looking at your Bible like, ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. God, I know I need to pick it up. Keep it real. Mm-hmm. But I need a minute, God. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to go to it. That's right. But don't think that if you if if you just say, Ooh, you know what, give me that's right. Give me five minutes, Lord. That's real. Mm-hmm. Give me five minutes. Because we, we have our issues too. That's right. We struggle too. Mm-hmm. But 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 we have the common sense. Yeah. Don't stay away from that's it. Right. That's right. That's right. Don't stay away from it. You go right to it because what you need is gonna be right in the word. And God has an amazing knack of just taking you right to what you need for that day. Amen. 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 And so and, and then last but certainly not least, we need to guard our ear gate. Yes. And our eye gate. Yes, yes, yes. And our heart. Yes. With what we ingest, Amen. what we allow ourselves to see, yes. what we allow ourselves to hear. Amen. We got to stay away from that negativity. Yes. You yes. know there's some yes. stuff on TV you shouldn't be watching. Amen. You know there's some stuff on the radio you shouldn't be listening Come to. Come on now. That's right. Come on now. Yeah. And we all... Come and on. you know if you got a weakness and, and, uh-huh. and you know that Luther make you do some things you know you shouldn't be doing, then you need to shut Luther down yeah. until you can get in a posture where you can hear him and that temptation not be there. I'm not saying don't listen to Luther. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying know where you are in your, in your, in your temptation. Amen? Amen? So what we ingest through what we watch and listen, that gets in our system. It will. Yes, it does. And it affects our mind and it affects it our heart. It will. And as a man thinketh, so, so is he. Amen. Mm-hmm. And so just like food going in our system mm-hmm. or data going into a computer, mm-hmm. garbage in, mm-hmm. garbage, out. garbage out. So we have to really be careful and make sure that we're lining ourselves and we're posturing ourselves to be in the presence of God because that's the only way we're going to attack, you know, be able to counterattack those attacks. And we have to put on a whole armor of God every day. Every day, whole armor of God and ask him every day to, to renew your mind, mm-hmm. transform you, to mm-hmm. give you a right thinking. Come on, God. That's an everyday thing. Yes, it is. That's just like getting up and drinking some water, brushing your teeth. That's an everyday yeah. thing mm-hmm. that we have to do because if not, the enemy, that's how he's going. And he gets us, amen? Yeah. And then when we spend that time in the word, and we spend, then it keeps us from being oppressed because he gives us the direction. Mm-hmm. Amen. God understands we're, we're humans. <laughs> we're a natural body. So he understands that you're going to have a minute. But let it be that. Let mm-hmm. it be a minute. Mm-hmm. Don't let it become an hour. <laughs> you know, or some days or days. Let it be just a minute. Amen? Amen. So don't let this present, present suffering deter you from God's plan for your life. Jesus. No, it's not easy. And yes, it will hurt like hell. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Amen? But in the end, the reward will be worth it. We just have to trust God that his word is true and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Mm-hmm. Now, the question we all have to ask ourselves, mm-hmm. we all have to ask ourselves is, are we, are we seeking him as much or as well as we should? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Come on now. Or are we settling for the life we feel we're, we, um, are we settling for the life we feel we were dealt with? or see before us? Mm-hmm. Are we choosing to walk in victory or are we using power mm-hmm. and authority that has been granted to us? Mm-hmm. Or are we walking in fear and settling for the status quo? Because mm-hmm. God, the word says, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but a power of love mm-hmm. and of a sound, sound mind. mind. So he's giving you power He's given you love to carry out what he's called you to do in a sound mind, meaning he's given you wisdom and revelation, knowledge, and understanding so that you're walking according to his will. Amen. And the love will help you carry it out. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit gives you the power to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. But when we stay in fear and we forget to tell ourselves that, then we miss 
what God is doing. Amen? Yes. And we miss where he wants us to go, and then we settle. We settle for less than. God ain't never called us to less than. He said, I came to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. He never called us to less than. He didn't say that we weren't going to go through. He didn't say that. Because the sufferings of this present time yes. are not to be compared. However, know that we don't always suffer either. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So are we walking in fear and or are we are settling for the status quo quote? And are we honest enough with ourselves? And are we choosing or are we choosing to live a lie mm. that has been presented to us? Because a lot of us have been lied to. <coughs> we've been told we're not worthy. Mm. We've been told we're ugly. Mm. We've been told we are never going to amount to anything. Mm. We've been told that we can't do it. We've been told we're not smart enough. We're not yeah. pretty enough. We're not tall <laughs> enough. We're too skinny. We're too big. We've been told we've been oh. lied. Mm -hmm to keep us from being where yeah. God would have us to be. So do we choose to live that lie? Or do we go back because we're studying the word and the word tells us that we're fitfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Amen. Come on. Oh, amen? Amen. So do we, do, we, do we settle for what someone says out of their own insecurity yeah. or their own hatred or their own anger or their own bitterness, some issues that they haven't dealt with? Do we settle for that? Or do we say, wait a minute, hold up, player? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's not what God said. Come on, now. That might be what you feel, but that's not who I am. Amen. And the beautiful thing about it is people say they know us, but we don't really know who we are. We know who we are at this moment, mm -hmm. but we don't even know who we're becoming. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I don't know who I'm becoming because God is still working and elevating me and taking me, how you going to know who I'm becoming? Mm -hmm. You're not. Mm -hmm. So am I going to trust the one who has created and made, or am I going to go with what I'm being told? Come on. Mm. So let's mm. not let oppression stop our push. Amen. Amen. So let's be strategic. Amen. Amen. Go to higher heights in the Lord. Amen. 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 That's it. Amen. 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 Amen.